Hello students, nice to see you again and welcome to Max Sensei's online English lesson uh, in the new video. Um, I have a question. When you watch this video and you see my smiling face, do you smile too uh, when I say hello? And uh, if I keep my smile, are you going to smile for today's video as well? Uh, well, that's actually today's topic. We are going to be talking about smiling. And today's article is called The Science of Smiling. Why do people smile? And we're going to look at various um, ways, uh, various, you know, reasons why people smile and what smiling means, why we smile and so on. So I hope you are ready to smile for this video because I am going to smile a lot for this video and I hope you smile too. All right, let's get started. The science of smiling. Why do people smile? What do people in your country do to make a person smile for a photograph? In most Western countries, the photographer would say, say cheese, Pa-ching! because saying the word cheese makes your mouth imitate a smile, cheese, like that. Smiling in photos is the normal way to take a picture. So is smiling in customer service at least in Western countries. Even customer service over the phone, the workers are told to smile so that the customer can notice the smile while having a conversation over the phone. But why is smiling so important? And why do companies want their workers to smile to customers? Well, the answer is in the power of a smile. Of course, we know that smiling is an expression of our emotions, feelings of happiness, enjoyment, affection, or even when we are being friendly with others. But smiles are much more powerful than that. And there are some studies that are proving the power of a smile. Recent studies show that smiling helps people connect with others, improving relationships between friends, family members, or acquaintances. It also helps people get out of arguments or embarrassing situations. But new studies are also showing that smiling can help, you, uh, can help make you live longer. Smiling has been shown to lower blood pressure and slows down the heart rate. Laughing or smiling can reduce the risk of heart-related diseases and make people live longer. When did you start smiling? I mean, when did you in your life start smiling. Uh, it's earlier than you expected, actually. Of course, you can see babies smiling as early as two weeks old to express their happiness. But medical studies show that babies are exercising their facial muscles by smiling in the womb of the mother. It's the same as how they, you know, stretch their legs and arms and uh, they're also practicing uh, smiling like that. <laughs> Little babies. Animals are also smiling to each other to express happiness. Chimpanzees, which are a distant relative to humans, also smile. This means that our ancestors before humans existed also probably smiled. It has a very long and important history on this planet. Smiling is also contagious. Smiles pass from one person to the next. Have you ever been upset at your friend? But since they were smiling at you, your frustration for them was evaporated and you started smiling too? It is because people lose control of their facial muscles when they look at someone else smiling. Their face automatically copies the person they are looking at. And smiling, uh, sorry, and smiling like they are helps people understand each other's emotions. Let me explain that a little bit better. 
So if you see someone smiling and you start smiling too, you guys form a connection and you can understand each other's emotions and you can communicate better. Okay, so of course, when you're happy, you smile, right? But when you smile, you can become happy. Okay, the opposite is true too. Scientists have taken pictures of the brain to see what happens when a person is happy. They can see the same effect when the person smiles, even if they are not feeling happy at that moment. The brain doesn't know if you are pretending to smile or if your smile is genuine. One scientist, uh, sorry, one scientist mentioned that one smile can have the same positive impact on the person than eating 2,000 bars of chocolate. That's a lot of happiness. So even if you're feeling sad or depressed, faking a smile may be able to positively affect your mood. The best way to keep happy is to smile and to be around smiling people. I hope you all smiled after reading this essay, watching this video, and so on. Uh, all right, that's the end of the essay. Let's see. There are some things I like talking about a little bit more, and one of the things is about the um, animals smiling. Uh, so we know that... Um, when we when humans see another animal and or sorry when a human sees another human smiling we kind of smile too uh, and this also works in animals uh, especially chimpanzees of course chimpanzees want to show other animals that they are not threatening or dangerous so they'll smile as a kind of a signal to other animals that like Hey, I'm not dangerous. I don't want to attack you. I'm not angry. So it's okay. You can come talk to me or you can come share my space or share my food or something like that. And it's really interesting to see that um, uh, scientists or maybe psychologists, anthropologists, they believed that uh, our ancestors before humans probably smiled. And uh, that was a way to, you know, find a friend or a possible mate uh, to continue the species and to, you know, make sure to avoid violence or anything like that. I thought that was pretty interesting when I was uh, researching. Then finally, like uh, the ending of the essay talks about like, if you're happy, you smile. But also, if you're not happy and you smile, you become happy. I thought that was really interesting. I don't know if it's exactly true. What do you guys think? If you smile, do you think you become happy even if you're feeling sad? Many websites I research say a good way to avoid feeling sad or if you're feeling down or you're feeling upset, try to smile and maybe your sadness or your frustration or stress will go away. You should try it. Uh, if this week you're feeling upset or sad about something, uh, just by yourself, maybe go in the bathroom, smile, watch yourself smiling in the mirror and see if it makes you happy. I think I've never tried it before, but uh, it, you know, it might work. And if it works, that's great, right? I mentioned in the essay about eating 2000 bars of chocolate uh, and how that's equal to one smile, that's a pretty big impact. Um, if you know, chocolate has a chemical inside it that makes you happy. So there's a chemical inside our bodies called, I think it's called serotonin. And serotonin, the chemical, will create the feeling of happiness inside you. So when you eat a bar of chocolate, it makes serotonin in your body. That's why chocolate can be addictive, because if you eat too much chocolate, 
serotonin will only be created because of the chocolate, not because like your body won't be able to create it without chocolate. And so you want to eat more and more chocolate. And then the only way you can feel happiness is if you eat chocolate. Actually, a lot of um, a lot of illegal drugs do something similar. You know, you take a drug, it makes you happy, and then you become addicted because it's the only thing that makes you happy. However, smiling might be able to do that too. And it's not a drug, it's not unhealthy, it's not chocolate, expensive chocolate. Uh, It's just free. You can smile and you can feel happy. Wow, you know, I've been smiling for most of this video and I'm feeling pretty happy. Uh, But now it's time to move on to the vocabulary. Uh, I hope you guys are happy about learning new words. Um, Let's look at the first word. The first word is imitate. Imitate. Imitate means copy a person's speech or mannerisms. There are several different definitions for imitate, but in our essay today, we said, your mouth imitate a smile. The word cheese makes your mouth imitate a smile. So that means copy a person's speech or mannerisms. The next word is acquaintance. So we have a close friend. Well, okay, the order is family. Family is always number one. They are the people closest in your life, your family uh, and your partners, the people you love. Then you have friends. And there's kind of an order to your friends. You have super close friends. Then you have just, yeah, kind like they're my friend. Then you have people who you know them, you're friendly with them, but you don't consider them your friends. So uh, that is an acquaintance. An acquaintance is person one knows slightly, but who's not a close friend. Uh, okay, next is contagious. Contagious. You probably know this word because we've been living in a, a pandemic and the word contagious is very common when used about a deadly infection or virus. Uh, but contagious can also be linked to emotions or feelings. So the definition for contagious is an emotion, feeling, or attitude likely to spread to and affect others. And we said smiling is contagious. When you smile, uh, someone else will smile too. The same is true for yawning, like (sighs) maybe you feel like yawning now that I did that because a yawn is contagious as well. All right, number four is evaporated. So to evaporate, scientifically, evaporate means when a water, uh, because of heat, a water becomes gas, like a water disappears and enters the atmosphere. Uh, That's evaporation. However, the word evaporate can be used to mean something that ceases to exist. And in the article, I said your frustration for them was evaporated and you started smiling. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you were upset at your friend, but your friend was smiling at you, maybe your frustration for them evaporated. And the final word is genuine. Genuine, a person, emotion, or action that is sincere. It's a real true thing, a genuine thing. Uh, so your the brain doesn't know if you're pretending to smile or if your smile is genuine. Genuine means like it's a true smile. You're smiling because you feel happy. Your brain doesn't really know the difference. Okay, and finally we have um, uh, we have uh, let's go down to our discussion questions. Okay. Our discussion questions, I have five questions. You, you can answer as many as you like, uh, or you can answer only the, the interesting ones, or you can answer all of them. Uh, I look forward to reading your guys' answers. Let's look at number one. So do you think smiling is a good way to feel better? Yes or no? And why do you think so? So you can explain your answer, okay? And number two, what do you usually do to cheer yourself up? 
So when you aren't feeling happy, what do you do to make yourself feel happy? Okay, what do you do to cheer yourself up? Cheer yourself up means to make yourself more happy, to make yourself happy. Uh, question number three. Uh, th this has many questions. Uh, just feel free to talk about the ones who that you think are interesting, okay? So who do you think smiles more often, young or old, men or women, Japanese or American? Okay, so this is an interesting question. I want you guys to think about, do young people smile more than older people? Do men smile more than women? Do Japanese people smile more than American people? What do you guys think? And again, if you just want to talk about men and women, that's okay. If you just want to talk about young or old or Japanese or American, that's fine too. All right, number four. In what situations do you smile the most? Uh, you know, have you ever been in a situation where at the end of the day, your cheeks are so sore because you've been smiling too much? Uh, what situation does that happen in? And number five, do you consider yourself an optimist or a pessimist? I think we've talked about these words before. Do you know what the word optimist or pessimist means? Well, it means uh, an optimist is someone who thinks positively, always thinking positively. And a pessimist is someone who thinks a little bit more negatively. So, for example, like someone who is more kind of realistic, you know, like, oh, you know, everything will be all right by August. Like the, the coronavirus will be finished by August. Definitely. That's a very optimistic attitude, a very positive thinker. But sometimes an optimist is not so uh, like doesn't really consider real or logical thinking. And a pessimist is the opposite, someone who's really negative. Like if somebody said the coronavirus will never end, we'll always have to be quarantined and wear a mask for as long as we live. Now that's really depressing and pessimism is usually, you know, negative and sad. But there is a kind of middle ground and that is like a realist or a logical thinker. Uh, but I think everyone is kind of one way or the other. So what do you guys think? Are you an optimist or a pessimist? Uh, I want to answer one of these questions. Uh, so number two, what do you usually do to cheer yourself up? I think I, I think you guys know what I usually do and um, I talk about it a lot, but I really love um, watching movies, uh, watching comedy and playing video games. So uh, if I'm, you know, tired from a long day at work or I'm stressed or just feeling a little bit bad, I kind of want to forget my worries and focus on something different. And a movie is a great way to focus on something different. Uh, and playing video games is also a really great way to, you know, forget your troubles, forget the stress and focus on a story or playing a game or something. So um, what I usually do to cheer myself up is I will get some snacks at the Combini at the 7-Eleven. I'll get home. I'll take my shoes off, get inside the house, sit down on my sofa, find a good movie to watch on Netflix, turn it on, open up some potato chips or otsumami or have a drink and relax and forget my worries. Uh, how about you? What do you guys do to cheer up? Uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope uh, I hope I smiled most of this video and I hope you imitated my smile and you were smiling for the whole video as well. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching so much. It's so great to hear from you guys. Looking forward to all your answers to these questions. Goodbye everyone. See you next time.